Muslims that it was Paul that created Christianity. I see. And that Paul preached another gospel. Right. I don't, I don't believe Paul created Christianity. Okay. I think he had a big input into it. Oh, definitely. But I don't think he created it from nothing. I think there were antecedents in his people who came before him, uh, who uh, had some of the ideas that Paul took up. Uh, but I don't think Paul's gospel is the same as the gospel of Jesus at all. I think it's quite different. One reason why you dispute that. Well, um, and also the, you've got to remember the different dispensations, which you must accept. You know, there's sometimes dispensations. What do you mean? So prior to Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection, you couldn't believe in Jesus' death and burial and resurrection. You know, you accept it, right? For your salvation, you can't believe in something that predates the historical events, right? Do you, get, do you understand my point? I understand it. I, I'm not sure. I. It's not. I'm not sure. I agree with that. But so, so my, my, my ask, it, my my point would be to look at the gospel of Jesus, the, the gospel he preached according to the earliest gospels, and the gospel that Paul preached, and then compare them. That's, that's, simple, that's quite a simple. So if you look at the earliest gospels, Jesus went around Galilee and, and Jerusalem and so on, preaching um, uh, the, the gospel, which uh, centered around this concept of the kingdom of God. Uh, I'm not sure I understand what it means. Uh, many people have different views on it. Uh, so he preached that entry into the king, entrance into the kingdom of God was possible there and then, and he encouraged people like the tax collectors and the prostitutes and others to enter into the kingdom. And I would also say about Jesus, uh, historically, is, uh, for me it's important to understand that he was uh, a Palestinian Jew, that he was a, an Israelite, he was a Jew, and he practiced Judaism, and that he was actually a Torah observant Jew. So he, he like a good Jew, uh, obeyed the law according to uh, our sources, and didn't preach abrogation of the law, or that the law should be uh, cancelled or abolished or anything like that. Total agreement. Uh, well, many Christians think that he did do that, uh, that Paul, that the Bible teaches that, but I don't think Jesus as a Jew taught that. So we have a, a Torah observant Jew who it seems thought of himself as a prophet, maybe as a messiah as well. I'm speaking historically here rather than as a Muslim. Okay, could you deal with me on the basis that the Bible is one whole book and, and not to pick and choose? So basically what I'm trying to say is that try and, from the Bible, see or, or see the deep the divergence of Paul's teaching against Jesus' teaching. I think that, that's, that this may be what you've just said, the, the heart of the matter, or the, uh, uh, what you, I, I think, is that, as I just said two seconds ago, I'm coming to yes, this... you can come in as well. Uh, yes, absolutely. Please do, Nazan. Um, I'm coming to it from a historical point of view. So I, I'm, my views are informed by Western historical scholarship. Okay, the sort of thing you, you, you learned at university, which I did learn at university, but also from subsequent biblical scholars. So but the, in terms of their academic work, I don't follow them slavishly because they often disagree with them. At times. I made up my own mind. Yeah, well, I, listen, I, I, I told you, and, and there is a place for higher criticism of the New Testament. But I'm saying, for this discourse, if we could look at the internal evidence of the New Testament, and from that, try and show me where Paul well, that's diverges. I, I'm, I'm coming to Even that. Even if you want to use scholarship. I, 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 haven't, I, haven't, I will use scholarship, that's yeah. Because I'm coming from, it, coming from, it from an, uh, a more academic point of view. Okay, now, I'm not coming it from a, Mo a Muslim perspective, because, uh, uh, although I believe that, but it's just, uh, for this discussion, I'm just focusing on the uh, historical arguments. So it seems to me that Jesus preached, as I say, the kingdom of God. People could enter into it, and they. Uh, I'll give an example from Matthew chapter 10, the story of the young ruler, according to Luke's version, anyway, who came to Jesus and said, "Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life?" Have you heard of this story, Nazan? Oh, yes, from Mark chapter. Oh, is it? Yes, Mark chapter 10, verse verse 17. Um, and uh, so Jesus said, "Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life?" And in fact, just to show that I'm not making the story up. No, 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 I, I, I know. It's an author of the gospel, isn't it? So. Uh, yeah, but, but it's, it's not, it's actually the story is subtly changed in Matthew, so it's not quite the same in all three Gospels. And in fact, the difference is that Matthew change, changes the Gospel is actually a really important point in itself. But I, I, that's not the subject we're talking about. As he was setting out in the journey, a man ran up to Jesus 
and asked him, good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus said to him, why do you call me good? No one is good but God alone. You know the commandments. Yeah. Don't murder, go commit adultery, don't steal, don't bear false witness, don't defraud, only your father and mother. Okay, so we'll stop there. Let's go. Well, so no. We, we would agree, Paul preached all those things, right? Yeah. Well, no, I, I haven't, okay, um, no. Obviously we're talking about whether Jesus diverged from, but or I, Paul diverged from Jesus. You've got to let me, because okay, you've got to let me finish uh, this. So, um, the man said to him, Teacher, I have kept all these since my youth. Jesus looked at him and loved him and said, You lack one thing. How many things that has One. Can you raise your finger? One. No, not that finger. This matters. You think I'm being nutty? This matters. Right? Thank you. You lack one thing. Now, this is the one thing he lacked. Go, sell what you own, and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Yeah, but don't stop there. Okay. Now, hang on a second. Yeah. That'd be two. And, and then come follow me, Jesus exactly. says. Now, hang on a second. That's two things. The one thing that Jesus said will get him into paradise would be to sell all his possessions and give money to heaven. So the, the treasure he has in, in, on earth, he will exchange for treasure in heaven. Now, now, now. The one thing is sell everything you have, give it to the poor, and follow me as in the one thing. That's how I interpret well, it. Well, I, I don't. I interpret the, 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 the. It sounds like two things to me. No, but it's, it's one injunction, right? Bless you. Okay, it's, it's two actions. See ya. So just to finish what I was saying. Just what I'm saying. So how are we saved? According to the command came to Jesus, what must I do to be saved? Or why do you call me good? Sorry. And Jesus said, and then you lack one thing, give what you uh, own and you will have treasure in heaven. Now, if that man died that night, having given uh, that afternoon all his treasure to the poor, for example, would he go to heaven? Would he be saved? Uh, I would argue he would. Now, that is part of the gospel of Jesus to the, to the rich man. It's part of the preaching of Jesus. And there are many other examples like this where uh, salvation is works-based. Uh, it's based on your actions uh, and the way you tr treat people with mercy and kindness and good works. Now, uh, and that's very common in the synoptic tradition, in well, Matthew, Mark, and Luke. So now, uh, you, but can I just respond? Uh, not, if I could finish, because uh, you're not hearing what I've said yet okay, in, in completion. So, I, I, th 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 I might forget, and if you go on a, mon a long monologue, then I might forget and, and go on. So. I only deal in long monologues. If you're talking to me, I deal in long monologues. Okay, well, I, is that bad, I'm afraid? <laughs> I, I'm a person of long monologues. Uh, it's just the way I am. Would it be possible then if I do cut you on at, at certain injunctions? Well, you asked me a question to compare the two. I've only uh, explained one. So I don't want to, I just want to finish what I'm saying. Okay, go uh, the second one is Paul. What must I do to be saved according to Paul and his gospel? Well, we know what the answer is. If you look in the beginning of Galatians, you look in, uh, in Romans and so on. You, uh, to give one typical example, if you want to be saved, you must put your trust in Jesus' death and resurrection and you will be saved. I'm sure you don't need, I can quote you chapter and verse if you wish. Oh, yeah, no problem. Now, um, now, my point about this is, these are two completely different Gospels. One is you're not putting, Jesus doesn't require you put your faith in him as, as a dying and rising saviour to be saved, like Paul says. But you, in fact, all you need to do in, in this example of the rich young man in Mark 10 is to give away your wealth to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven. So, and these are, these are two examples of many, many other instances in the Gospels where Jesus says, you don't have to have faith in me, you just put your faith in God. All the way through Matthew's Gospel, for example, you have this. Jesus is not the, so a simple way of putting it is this. The gospel of Jesus, which is there in Mark 10, has been turned into the gospel about Jesus in Paul's writing. So the proclaimer, and this is quoting Rudolf Boltman, the great biblical scholar in the 19th, 20th century, the proclaimer became, became the one proclaimed. You have a precise inversion of Jesus' gospel. Muslims would say, and I think they're right, that the, the Quran has come to uh, put it the right way up again, that G, the message, the message of Jesus is what we believe in, we don't uh, put Jesus as the center of that message. Jesus' proclamation of the one God is what we should believe in, not believe in Jesus as a God, which is what Christians turned no, no, no. him so into. Listen, remember the context. So that's and finished. I'm finished my that. long monologue now. was that Paul preached something that was contrary to what Jesus preached. That was it. Actually, it was very different. It's a different religion. No, okay, so let, let me just... If you want to call that contrary, it's up to you. Let me address your point. So you said Paul spoke about keeping the commandments. Yeah, you shall not kill, you shall not honour your mother and father. No. Did, did Paul um, preach all these things as well? No. What if I show you? 
No. Well, I can tell you. I've no, if, I, if I show you, you don't Paul, need to. I know already. Paul said, "Honor your mother and yeah. father in the Lord." Yeah, no, but many other laws that Paul said that Jesus he, abolished, which Jesus said, hadn't. Law, the this, food laws, for example. Your, no, no. Food laws were abolished. No, you just quoted that. So let's deal with Matthew, uh, Mark. Was that Mark or Matthew you quoted? Uh, yeah, Matthew Mark. changes Jesus' words okay. so in just, Mark. So yeah, you know saying, <laughs> which is quite important. Responding to what you just said. Yeah. Okay. So all those commandments. We see the reaffirmation in Paul's letters. Yeah, but he changed yes many other. Would you no, agree? A yes and no, because Jesus uh, endorsed the Torah. Paul rejected the Torah as a means of salvation. Jesus affirmed the Torah as a means of salvation. That's so where the difference. Not Paul give lists. He says, "Neither fornicators nor adulterers," and, and he says, "Will not inherit the kingdom of God." He, he abolished was, kosher laws. Well, no, he was a heretic. Listen, you're going. You're just jumping. You, you, you're just giving me. That scripture, and I'm responding. Yeah, to but Mark. do you agree Paul abolished the kosher laws? Because he says so all over the place. Let me just finish my point. Because okay? that's what I'm saying. I just want to address his point, and then we can go. But then Naz the Nazam can say something then. Okay, do you want to say something? No, I'm fine. Um, okay, so what I'm trying to say is do we agree that Paul preached me? in order to enter the kingdom of God, you have to keep these certain laws? No. Not the same identical laws as the Jews. No, no, regarding what Jesus called. Uh, it depends on which gospel you refer to. Regarding, he, he came yeah. a verse from Mark to say that it was different to the gospel that Paul uh, preached. Absolutely. And I'm saying that's not that's, that's totally wrong. Everything that Jesus preached about there, we, we see it in Paul's letters. But we don't see Paul saying you are saved by obeying the law, do you? We, Jesus we, preached no, that. No, no. We do get Paul, Paul oscillates. No, we did Paul. We he did does get, a bit. I think he's a bit confused, actually. No, no, no. But Paul, Paul, Paul tends to change his mind on different letters, no, actually. I think that's I think, my view. Yeah, I, 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 I tend I, to I'm agree with that. I'm saying you're wrong. I'm to yeah, but you need to argue the case exactly, rather than just yeah. say you're wrong. Yeah. Wrong is not an argument. But, so the basis I'm trying to say, did Paul not say you have to live this way or you're not going to enter the kingdom of God? Yes or no? Wrong. No, I don't agree with that. Okay, shall I get you the verses? If, if you wish, but, yeah, okay. but, but but Paul said, as you've not addressed this, we are saved by putting our faith in Jesus' death yeah, and he, resurrection, he not by obeying the law. In Galatians, in the Galatians, he said, uh, you can't uh, obey the law yeah. according to Galatians I'm to saying, be saved. No, what you Do you agree with that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you Paul, agree. Yeah. Well, we, we agree. Yeah. Paul, yeah. In Galatians. Paul preached against being justified by the law, but he didn't preach against the law. It's a big difference. He did preach against the law. Okay, tell me where you've I've already told you three times. You're not, you're not listening. Wait, wait, wait. Kosher laws. Kosher laws. He preached against them explicitly, okay, repeatedly. Romans, we well, don't know. No. Romans, Corinthians, okay. he says so all over the place. No, according, no, no, so, um, 1 Corinthians, no, he says. Romans chapter 12. There you are, Romans chapter 12. In Acts chapter 15. Romans chapter no, no. 12. In, in Paul's writings, no, no. in Paul's writings, no, no, no. you wanted the examples. Let's look at the examples where Paul. Let's go to Acts where Paul, chapter 15. No, let's go to Paul's writings. No, no, no. no, no. Why would you go to Paul's writings? The argument is. We're going to look at Paul's writings. No, just Hang listen on. to my point. Please. Okay, listen. Okay. Uh, no, and then we'll quote the passages in Paul's writings where he says he's against kosher point. laws. Be fair. Mm -hmm. If the injunction for Gentiles was to only eat, not to eat food sacrificed to idols, nor to eat food strangled, or to eat blood, that was the injunction from there James. Why are you putting that on Paul? Right, here we, here we have Paul himself. Now remember in no, Judaism, in the religion of Jesus... Wait, you're not listening. Well, well, you ask us to point in Paul's letters where he said he was against kosher. No, no, can can I me read the Bible no, to you? To can I read this to you? No, can you just listen to my point? I did. Jesus himself I did. Did, did this come from Paul or did it come from James? This comes from Paul. No, so listen to my point. Well, can I quote you, no, Paul? In, in the Jerusalem Council... I'm not talking about the Jerusalem Council. We're talking about Paul's... Being sacrificed to an idol. Yeah. Idols, yeah. Right. So show me where Paul says you can eat food offered to idols. Yeah, here, yeah. here. Okay, go on. But, but we've been trying to read it to you. Go on, read Paul, it. Uh, uh, Romans chapter 14, verse 20. Uh, chapter 14, verse 20. Uh, for the sake of food, do not destroy the work of God. Everything is indeed clean, but it is wrong for anyone to become a stumbling block by eating it. So you can says, read it. Can read it. Is, uh, it is good not to eat meat or drink wine or do anything that causes your brother to stumble. Yeah, go and keep reading. Uh, keep the faith that you have to yourself uh, in the presence of God. Blessed is the one who doesn't condemn himself for what he is, but uh, whoever has doubts is condemned. If he eats because this isn't from faith or whatever isn't from faith is. 
So let me get what Paul says about food offered to idols. This is the actual context. Let me actually read it. So if we go to First Corinthians chapter 8. But this injunction didn't come from Paul, it came from James. So if, if, if your issue that Paul changed the gospel, you're going to have to put it on James. No, 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 I, I, think, I think but, but, if, I, if I can now say, say some things. There's a danger here, and we're getting bogged down into what Paul did and didn't say about food laws, is to miss the elephant in the room. Paul's gospel is focused on Jesus' death and resurrection for salvation. Yeah. It says that in Romans 3 and in numerous places. Okay. That is not the gospel that Paul went, sorry, that Jesus went around preaching in Matthew, Mark, and Luke. Okay. It's a completely different no, no. religion. No, no, I don't the, the, I'm finished. Can I, can I finish? So the point here about arguing about these nitpicking over this, I think is actually missing the point. And my point was never this, it was always the bigger issue. How are we saved? How are we made right before God? So this is, let me give you a further illustration. How are we justified before God? How are we made right before God? Let's ask Jesus that question according to the Gospels and then let's look at Paul and what he says. According to Luke chapter 18 or 19, Never mind. Uh, there's this story of the rich man and the tax collector who go up to the temple to pray. We can never remember if it's, if it's chapter 18 or 19. All these years we get this wrong. One day I remember it. Uh, the tax collector uh, says, thank God I'm not like this Pharisee, uh, like this, sorry. The Pharisee, who's the, the, the holy man, Listen, uh, the good I know, guy. I know the story, so you don't need to repeat it. But I need to repeat it for my own uh, point. My rhetoric, I need to repeat it. I, I get, I, I'm long-winded and this is what I'm like. Uh, the Pharisee, who's the good guy, says, thank God I'm not like this tax collector. I worship, I pray. The Pharisee, the tax collector, beat his chest, said, uh, God have mercy upon me, a sinner. And Jesus says, that man went home justified before God, the tax collector. Uh, why was that? What was the reason that Jesus gave? You may ask, if you could kindly... Beg for God's mercy. Sort of, yes, but he said, but Jesus actually said, whoever humbles himself before God will be exalted, whoever exalts himself will be humbled. Now, you ask the same question to Paul. Okay, so, what so, 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 Mr. Paul, hang on. No, 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 hang on. I, 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 haven't, I haven't finished. Nothing to do with Muslims. No, if I could finish. They can I, I, need to fi I need to finish what I'm saying. By good works. I need to finish what I'm saying. You can earn your good favor by good works. Uh, Jesus says that uh, repeatedly in the Gospels. So now, now to Paul, how are we justified before God? We are justified by God by putting our faith in Jesus Christ, uh, his death and resurrection. That's the justification by faith in that, in those things. This is a completely different religion. Jesus says, like, like a good Muslim, because Jesus was a Muslim prophet, he said, you humble yourself before your Lord, you submit, which is Islam. Paul said, no, 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 you've got to uh, put your faith uh, and your trust in Jesus' death and res resurrection, as if God requires a human sacrifice to atone, okay. to make us right before God. And that is, of course, completely... Can I ask, can I ask hang, on, hang on a second. Okay, that, that, that is completely wrong, both for Jesus' teaching and Islam. But Jesus is a Muslim prophet, therefore we would expect him to agree with Islam. Paul, obviously, was a renegade, a maverick, and a Jewish heretic. And that's why he dismissed the teaching of Jesus. Interestingly, he never met Jesus. He never once met the flesh and blood Jesus in his life. That's why he was able to make up these mystical notions about who Jesus is. Okay. So you, you just said that, um, so you, you said human sacrifice is her heretical to a, Well, to it's a prohibited by God okay. in the Bible, as a Muslim, repeatedly. So as a Muslim, <laughs> you don't believe in a God who accepts human sacrifice? Of course not. Of course not, yeah? And no. Do you agree with that? You don't believe it, yeah? You can it's never it's, believe, it's you prohibited. You never believe in a God who accepts human sacrifice? Of course not. Okay, okay, fair enough. I thought you knew that about okay, Islam. Okay, no, no, hold on, okay. And do you, and do you know, interesting, the okay. Bible itself repeatedly condemns human sacrifice. Okay, in right. Deuteronomy, no, 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 okay. let, let me it, many other places, God Can said, uh, uh, human sacrifice is an abomination. Okay. But it's so God always, is consistent. It's always written in the context of human sacrifice yeah. to false gods. It's always written in that no, context. No, any, 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 no, no, no. any human let, sacrifice. No, let me explain why it's wrong. Let me explain why you're wrong. It says no. you shouldn't imitate the pagan to sacrifice the yeah. yeah. So what I'm saying, yeah. human yeah. sacrifice... So that means God himself no, no, listen to my point. point. Human sacrifice was always forbidden in the context of sacrificing to false well, you're false implying gods. it's acceptable in other let contexts. Me make my it's point. not acceptable. Let me make my point. Let me make my point. Where's the evidence okay. that it I'm does? Sorry, I'm going to show you. But can you show us? Okay. So when God told Abraham to sacrifice his son, mm -hmm. 
at no point did Abraham reject and say, look, I can't believe what Which God. version of the story? In the Bible or in the Quran? In the There's Bible. two different in the versions. Bible. In the Bible. Well, the, no, 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 the, no, the, the Quran the is the authentic no, version of the story. The biblical you're story. Using the, Bible the biblical story. Make, no, 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 no. If you're using your Bible to make the point, it's good enough to refute the point. No, but that story so is not. Just, just no, it's point. important to continue here that let when we're talking about the story, it's different in the different scriptures. Even Jews interpret that. No, no, let me forget. Let me just make my point. Yeah. No, let me make my point. Even, even Jews don't agree with you. If you let me make my point and then come back. Yeah. Ah, we'll make the point based on the Quran. Okay. No, no. One, yes, yes. So God ordered Abraham to sacrifice his son. At no point did he say, no, I can't believe in a God who accepts you in the sacrifice. And you know what? We know the Bible calls Abraham a friend of God. How did Jews understand that? Let me that? just finish. Let me just finish. Okay. Let, let me, me know finish. Let me know when you finish. Yes, thank you. Could you go on? And I I'm not into that. I know you've said that several times. I go on and on, yeah. Okay, so please, let me allow the, the same liberty. So at no point did Abraham, we call Abraham a friend of God. And at no point did Abraham ever object and say, no, I can't believe in a God that accepts you in the sacrifice. Even when, Ab when God said to Abraham, I'm going to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah, he, he accosted God. He said, God, how can a God of all righteousness do such a thing? And he said, if they were cryptically righteous. So basically, he objected to God destroying a whole people if they were righteous people. In it. That's, that's, your, that's your interpretation. Well, okay. It's not the interpretation okay. of the Jews or the no, Muslims listen, or anyone else. Point. Let me make my point. You are. Okay, so, you are making your point okay. so what at I'm length. Saying, so my point is, according to you, Abraham wasn't a Muslim. Because you, no, he was a Muslim. No, listen to no, my no, no, point. No, no, no. Abraham, no, 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 no point of information. Point. Abraham was a Muslim prophet. Let me make you're my point. Mis you're misattributing no. let me error make my to point. me. Let me make my point and then you come back. No, but I'm just saying I'm correcting you on a listen, point of information you've here. Gone for a long time. Uh, uh, you know, but you're, you're, you're giving. So let me make my point and then no, you object. You are falsely attributing views to me. I want to stress that is Abraham is a Muslim prophet. To say I don't believe that is to accuse me of error. Thank you. You said Jesus was a Muslim. Yeah. I object to that, but I let you uh, carry on. Of course. So just allow me to say. Yeah, but you factually you attributed to me false beliefs. You made a mistake. Listen to the point. You listen, made a mistake. Listen. I am. That's why I'm saying you made a mistake. Okay. So Abraham believed in a God who accepted human sacrifice because he was willing no. to sacrifice his son you, you, in the Bible. With respect, you, sir, you're, do you agree? you're repeating yourself. Do you agree? Yes, in, in the Bible. Do you agree in the Bible that Abraham was going to sacrifice Isaac? Well, are you finished talking now? No, I'm asking you a question. Are you finished talking? I'm asking you a question. Yes, I know, but can, can I respond in full now? Right, okay, well, no. you finish. I'll, you I'll, I'll now respond. And then I'll, and then I'll, right, I'll now respond. So, just say yes or no and then I'll... I'll no, 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 I'm not going to answer. Uh, give me a chance to answer when you finish. You're so, going to let okay, me know when you finish. Abraham you are. I haven't think you make your point. You'd be lost for the last five minutes. God that accepted human sacrifice from a no. biblical point of view, right? He didn't say, oh no, I don't believe in a God that accepts human sacrifice. So he believed in Abraham. Until that point, but then God taught fine. Abraham yeah, yeah, that he doesn't. No, no, that's my point. You, you, you told what? Will, will, will you let Nazam speak? Will you let Nazam speak? He doesn't uh, want human sacrifice. No, 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 Again time. No, but listen to my yeah, point. Yeah, should we go now? No, sir, because you've been refuted now. Abraham no, no, believed no, in a God of human sacrifice because he was going to no, sacrifice he didn't. his no, son. No, he didn't. No, he didn't. No, he didn't. So why was he going to sacrifice his son? Right. Is it my chance to speak now? So why was he going to sacrifice right. his son? Thank you. So, so Nazam, I'm not going to address Nazam. So Nazam, let's talk about this. So in this story, what were you saying before he interrupted you and carried on talking? Well, well in, in, in the story ends by Abraham learning a lesson from God, mm -hmm. which is that God doesn't desire human sacrifice. Was right. Abraham going to sacrifice his son? Unlike the pagan. No, was right. Abraham okay. in the in the beginning? He was. Uh, but then God taught okay, him. Okay, so one second. It was a moral so, story. No, no, it was no, a lesson. No, no, no. So, so no, no, now I'm going. No, this is our chance to talk now. Yeah. So that means Abraham believed in a God that accepted human sacrifice. No, he no. Grew, grew no. no, but at that moment when he no. was willing to sacrifice his son. He believed in a God that accepted human sacrifice. Yes or no? In Genesis chapter 20. He believed in it. Yes. So if he if he was you, according to you, and according right. to you, if he was a Muslim, he would say, no, 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 no. I wouldn't be, I can't believe in a God of human sacrifice. Okay. Can, 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 I, can I, okay, it's, it's, my, it's my turn. It's my turn. Thank you very much. It's my turn. You proved that Abraham no, no, wasn't no, a Muslim. No, no, God bless you. No, no. he's no. running away now. We notice the guy's running away. We're, we're about to notice how he's running away, not giving us a chance to respond. That's unfortunate that he's doing that. So now, Nazan, but we can 
uh, yeah, address this like, issue? As I said, um, Jews interpret this particular story to right. teach Jews a lesson that God isn't like the other foreign or pagan gods in that he doesn't, um, the, the pagans, they will sacrifice their children to the yeah. uh, pagan gods. But uh, God is teaching Abraham a lesson and, yeah. and indirectly to other Jews uh, that God doesn't desire human sacrifice. Exactly. And indeed, God repeatedly says in the Jewish Bible, in the Pentateuch, that, in the Pentateuch, yeah, that in human sacrifice, yeah. yeah. Uh, so to the idea that God would then found a religion on the, on the human sacrifice of the Messiah is completely alien to the Jewish scriptures. And yet that is precisely what Paul claims in 1 Corinthians 15, verse two and three, where he says, the gospel I pass on to you so that Jesus, the Christ rather, uh, according to the scriptures, would die for our sins, according to the scriptures, and rise again from the third day from the dead, according to the scriptures. But the scriptures don't say that about Christ, the Messiah, anywhere. I'm aware. Are you aware of the Jewish scriptures ever saying that? So this is clearly a new religion, which is what my, my argument is. That he's run away. The, our, our, our friend here has run away, so we can't hold him to account this, that Paul's religion is a new religion. I'm not saying he invented all of it. I think the elements that he got from other people. To give him too much credit. It gives him too much credit. But nevertheless, a lot of it was by him. And the religion of Jesus nowhere says, and I quote in many, two passages, that only through uh, believing in the death of the Messiah, I, him, could sins be forgiven. It's not the gospel of Jesus. And the Quran gives us a sanitized version of the story of Abraham and Jesus. Um, the Quran uh, you know, shows that God doesn't also sacrifice it. Yeah. And of course, we believe, uh, and, and historical criticism confirms this, that the Torah has been changed and corrupted. Mm -hmm. And so, but to look for the authentic version, the original version, we have to look to the Quran. That's what Muslims believe. Uh, and historical scholarship has confirmed that a lot of the stories have been changed anyway over the centuries in the Jewish scriptures. So, in fact, Muslims and Western scholars agree on that. Uh, although, obviously, Western scholars don't accept the Quran because uh, they're historians who are looking at it from a secular point of view and they don't accept revelation which is unfortunate but that's what many of them are, are like unfortunately um, so yeah, we'll end with that. We'll end with that. it's a shame that he ran away but um, it says something when someone runs away they can't take the heat in fact the heat is quite intensive here actually so all right thank you very much